Emma Willard, knee heart, was born February 1787 and died April 15, 1870, at the age of 83. She was a feminist, activist for women's rights and education, an educator herself and school administrator, and an all-around promoter of high-quality female education. Today, Emma Willard is remembered by her legacy in ensuring successful, high-standard female education through her school, now titled after its founder, the Emma Willard School, for boarding and day girls in Troy, New York. Before all that, Emma was born in Berlin, Connecticut, popularly known as a farming town. She was the second youngest of 17 children. Yes, she was the 16th child to Samuel, a liberal and a farmer, and ninth born to her mother, who was her father's second wife. Emma's passion for equal quality education for women can be attributed to her father's own values of education for all of his children, especially his daughters. Emma attended a district school for her elementary schooling, and her education was supplemented by her father, who tutored her in the evenings after his work. At 15, Emma moved on to a high school named Berlin Academy in her hometown run by Dr. Minor of Yale. Even though her school was described as far away from her home, her drive to continue learning kept her going, and at 17, she started practicing teaching there as well. In 1804, Emma Hart started her own summer school for village kids. Her own younger sister, Amira, was among her first class. The story of her first obstacle as a teacher was determining how to discipline unruly boys in her classroom. Her secret was a meter stick sort of rod, that after its first use, never again was necessary. For three years, until 1807, Emma taught and ran her summer school, gaining experience and a network of professional relationships with other local headmistresses. She became well-known and even started receiving offers to teach in other schools in her region. Emma Hart was invited to teach in towns such as Westfield, Massachusetts, and Hudson, New York. First, she taught in Westfield, but ultimately left the position because the pay she considered abysmal, and she felt she was undervalued at that school. From Massachusetts, she moved to Middlebury, Vermont. In Middlebury, Vermont, Emma was not only a teacher, but also the director or principal of the all-girls school. She did describe disappointment in the school's expectations for their female students in her journaling, but she worked there for two years before marrying a local, Dr. John Willard, who was 28 years her senior. Before Emma married, the author of her biography, The Life of Emma Willard, describes the life she had as a teacher and school director. Author John Lord found her journal and some letters she wrote to friends and her parents, detailing her long and trying days but also her passion for her work. In her letters to her parents, Emma wrote about how her workday stretched from 7 a.m. when she awoke to prepare until 10 p.m. when she finally returned home and was too exhausted to do anything but sleep. In another letter, she even wrote about how she was trying hard to separate religionists' ideology from her school's curriculum. Emma Hartz's journal emanates her love for writing. In it, she alludes to her starting to write poetry, and in 1831, she finally published her first book of scripture titled The Fulfillment of a Promise, in which is her most famous poem, Rocked in the Cradle of the Deep, the first stanza pictured here. Well, in the 19th century, Emma's biographer, John Lord, describes how marriage for a woman was perceived, writing, the world might have said, and this is the end of her. At 22 years old, she married Dr. John Willard, a well-known citizen and Republican politician of Vermont, pictured here. But this was most certainly not the end of Emma Hart, now Willard. She did temporarily quit teaching, though. For five years, she devoted her life to supporting her husband, who soon after their marriage lost his job. But in 1814, she came up with her own solution to their financial troubles and opened a boarding school in their Middlebury home. Emma's husband greatly encouraged and supported her starting a school and was proud to let her exercise her own ambitions. A couple of years into the start of the school, she became determined to address the disparity between female and male education after witnessing it firsthand in her nephew's own schooling. 
she wrote to the public and her local legislators in her plan and address. Emma wrote a call to the public to boost care for quality female education in her address to the public, and later, after she moved to New York and opened a school in Waterford, she wrote to legislators, too. In September 1821, she opened the Troy Female Seminary in Troy, New York, championing equal women's education to that of men. In order to open her Troy Female Seminary, Emma had to persuade the city council to help raise money for her school. Before this school could carry her legacy, she had to rally the local people to value it how she did. The neighborhood ultimately came to love her and her mission for her school. The Troy Female Seminary, today titled the Emma Willard School, promoted valued education for girls of means, teaching them mathematics, science, languages including Latin, history, philosophy, and literature. This school was meant to be more than their average finishing school. Today, Emma's school serves as a boarding and day school for girls. Its commitment remains in educating motivated, intellectually curious young women, thus honoring their founders' vision for fostering in young women a love of learning, moral strength, and qualities of leadership to serve and shape her world. In 1838, after serving as an educator and administrator for over 30 years, Emma Willard retired, passing on the leadership of her academy to her only son. But she continued promoting the message of valued women's education all throughout Europe and America. 